Well, it's finally hit the, the heart of lettuce season. And here I am harvesting freckle, freckles lettuce, which is a leaf variety that we're growing for the first time this year. And so far I'm really enjoying it. I like how it looks, I like how it grows. And this is grown on the back of our greenhouse. This is the in-house greenhouse. And this is some of the soil that we dug out to dig down to put the greenhouse in the ground. And I could just harvest the whole heads, but I'm taking a little more time and I'm going along and just picking leaves off of each one. And this will extend the season a bit with these. Plus, once they start to bolt, I'll let them bolt and then I'll get seeds for next year. And I'll probably have to choose either this type or the Rouge de Hiver that is up on the other bed on the back of this which one I want because I can't have both of them flowering at the same time and cross-pollinating eh, unless I want to experiment with the crossbreeding which I don't particularly it's not a lot of calories but after eating all of our winter foods and our dry staples for months having all this green is a real nice addition to the diet Side of my property, I have some beds that are totally overgrown. But the nice thing about them is they have full sun, and I have a pretty shady yard in general. So, this uh, it's maybe a quarter of my really sunny areas. So, this is where I can put corn and tomatoes and other things. So, um, what I'm doing last year, I built some beds up with some, some nice soil, but the weeds got away from me, uh, and I just wasn't able to keep them down. Not to mention, plants and ant animals came in and got all my my starts. So this year I'm going to have to fence it and re-mulch it. Um, last year I didn't mulch it at all and you can see what happened. So this year I'm trying a full-on smother uh, with compost and wood chips and, and straw and we'll see what this looks like as we go through the season. Now that my corn has emerged in these mounds that I'm doing the test, remember this is the monocrop where I'm plant planting just corn, just beans, and just squash. And here I'm planting the corn, beans, and squash together so I can compare the yields with otherwise similar growing conditions, same amount of compost, same amount of space, yada yada. In this half, this is my corn, and now this is my beans. And I planted three beans and two quarts of compost. And over here, I am planting three beans into each of the each of the corn mounds. And what I'm going to do eventually is snip these corn plants. I'm going to pick the three strongest out of five seeds planted and I'm planting three bean seeds and I'll pick the top two bean seeds. So I'll thin them out and I'll have to do that here for the corn as well and the beans here. So they get the same treatment other than they are planted together or apart. And so here I am today planting up the beans. Next week I will plant out the squash. It's windy and it's hot but it's cooled down from how hot it was. So now I want to get some corn in and you've seen me plant corn in mounds over in the, the back 40 and there I had uh, 12 and 18 inch mounds with scoops of compost um, and bare soil all around them and that's all been eroding because of rain and I'm pulling the top topsoil into mounds and so I'm not really enamored of that process even though it's a pretty traditional one. So what I'm doing here is what I'd like to do which is plant through cardboard. And so what I have is I've smothered this whole area, which you saw me start last week. I just covered it all in cardboard, and then I put this mulch on top of it. And this retains moisture, it retains soil fertility. Um, I'm not gonna lose any topsoil, it actually builds soil, and I'll have more soil next year. Some people, uh, like Charles Downing, who I really admire on YouTube, I, I, I think his, uh, his videos are, and gardening are, are really, uh, inspiring and I like to watch them when I'm in need of a bit of energy but I have good soil I have good fertility so instead of putting compost on top of poor soil I want to tap into that soil and so instead of putting compost on top and planting into that 
what I do, or what I am doing this year, and what I've done in years past, and it seems to work well, is I clear the mulch off of a row, and then I go down with the hammer, uh, because I can't find my planting uh, implement, and just pop a hole, making sure not to hit my fingers, and I'm going every six inches. This allows the roots of the corn to have passage into there. And then each one just gets a little handful of compost, and this is really just to hold the corn kernel that I'm gonna put in. I don't wanna put the corn coil down the hole because it might not come up. So I've got my handful of compost in each hole. I grab my, my corn, this is popcorn. A friend of mine, Chuck, gave us uh, popcorn and instead of eating it, I'm planting it. Thanks, Chuck. So I just pop the corn in, tamp the compost down on top of it. It's about an inch down, boop, just with my finger, an inch under the compost. And then put the mulch back lightly on top so it can push through it. And that's it. And so I'll do one, two, three rows. Um, in these two beds here, and that'll be plenty of popcorn as long as the deer don't get it, or the raccoons, those buggers. Well, a couple of years ago, I started building a hedgerow. Hedgerows are a little unusual in America, but essentially, uh, what it is, is it is a hedge that serves as a fence, and it gets its horizontal members by cutting down trees. And you can see, for example, right here is a tree that I cut down. You cut it down in a special way. You only cut halfway through. And so I cut halfway through and bend it over and that leaves the cadmium, the, the outer layer, the vascular layer of the, of the tree intact. And that way it's still alive. So here's the trunk that was growing up here and I bent it over and now it's got all of these guys growing off of it, right? And so now what I'm gonna do is bend these down and knock them uh, into and weave them into the hedgerow. They'll keep growing and it just becomes this really thick tangled mat of vegetation that should keep animals out. This was used to keep uh, sheep and other things um, uh, in, in paddocks and fences in England and other places. Uh, as a little, like I said, unusual here in America, but it's a nice uh, low tech sort of way uh, to keep things uh, fence off. So. That's what I'm working on before we get dumped on. We're about to have a storm come through, so I gotta hurry. So now this will grow up and I'll weave it all back in and over and over until I have a dense hedge that uh, animals can't make it through. Well, we've got 140 degrees on the exterior of the compost pile. And it's starting to rain, so I gotta hurry and get this back in the hutch. But we hit 140 on the outside. When I get to the inside here, I bet it'll be up to 160. You can see the steam coming off of it. And it stinks because it's compost. That's how it goes. I'm trying to put the stuff that's not hot on the bottom and in the middle and just to cycle everything through so everything gets a chance to get real hot and composty. Well here I am out actually in my strawberry area. So back here behind me I have strawberry beds. And here I just scythed down a whole bunch of ground covering. And this stuff drives me nuts. This, this stuff. It just grows like, oh, it's just so pernicious and difficult to kill. And worst of all, it looks like strawberries. So it crops up in my strawberry patch and looks like strawberries. So I have to be really careful when I'm weeding. Oh, it drives me bonkers. Anyway, my plan here is to make three rows that are gonna be strawberries. But right now, they're gonna be nothing and I'm gonna put in tomatoes because it's full sun, it's a nice spot. And so I'm putting up 
a tomato trellis that I like to put up. I like these better than the cages, um, and I'll show you what I'm up to right now. Um, and then I'm going to hoe this into three rows, cover that up, plant my tomatoes, and we'll be good to go. So what I've done is I've driven in six posts, and then I've run these bars back and forth, and now I'm putting these on top. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna plant the tomatoes below this, tie this twine up here, and the tomatoes will grow up the twine. Uh, I find this to be easier to use than the tomato cages, and we'll, we'll see them grow on this uh, through the season. Uh, but uh, yeah, so here I am just lashing this all together so it can come, be taken apart with a knife in the fall. For the record, I really, really dislike these um, plastic smothering things. But number one, I am out of cardboard. Number two, I'm gonna pull them up. I've been reusing these things. I never bought these. These just showed up. They were, I was digging around and I found them in the ground. So I reused them and I'm gonna cover it all with wood chips and I've hoed up two or three large mounds of good soil and a whole bunch of weeds. And so what I'm gonna do is make the smallest hole I can and plant my tomatoes through them and then mulch around it and hopefully that if I do this and leave it until next summer, it will completely kill all this ground cover because I can't stand this ground cover. I can't tell you how many times I've removed it and it keeps coming back. It is just so pernicious. I, I'm not gonna use chemicals on it. Number one, at this point, where would I get them? Um, and number two, I, I just can't bring myself to do it, but they are tempting. Oh man, I, I understand why people use them or did use them but it's, I just can't do it. So, this is what I'm left with, and crossing my fingers. The worst part is, it's an ornamental ground cover that somebody put in here. Ah, well, good intentions, and I'm sure I'm doing stuff that the future owner of this house, maybe someday down the road, would tear out. However, without fossil fuels available, I think everyone's backyard is gonna start looking more like mine. I will say the nice part about growing tomatoes in this is that it keeps uh, the soil microbes that often carry bacteria for tomatoes off of the tomato plants. So when the water comes down as rain, it splashes on here, it doesn't splash on bare earth and send microbes and bacteria and pathogens up onto the tomatoes. So hopefully they'll do really well here, we'll see. Well, we've hit 150 on the surface. So hopefully we're 60, 160 internally. And luckily for you, smell doesn't come across in video because this thing stinks. Last week, this thing was that high, up to the top, and now it's dropped already in half. All right, I've been working this morning to grind up some corn. I had leftover corn from my seed stock so this is dent corn, it's multicolored. And I put it through, this is the end of the first round of grinding through stainless steel blades. Or burrs, I should say. The interesting thing about this cornmeal is it's whole, corn, it's whole kernel, meaning that the germ is in there and the oils and what would be taken out to make corn syrup and other things. Corn meal that you get at the store has a lot of stuff removed, just like white flour. So, when I grind up whole corn, it should make a different tasting product, a, a fuller product. I built this around because before, if I ground fast, it would just fly all over. And so this piece of a plastic milk jug, and I'm gonna make a, a more permanent uh, addition here, uh, really keeps everything a lot more organized. So essentially what these burrs do is run the corn through these channels where they get ground between the channels when they catch at the end. Giving a nice tight space for this to fit the, the meal to fit through and if it doesn't fit through it it gets caught and split. Kind of like 
hun like a whole bunch of scissors that fit together. And so these are sliding like that and catching the corn and slicing it. This is an old Schwinn World Sport 10 speed. Uh, it was picked up. Uh, Lauren was going to fix it up and use it, but uh, she's got a better bike anyway. And so it was just kind of literally <sighs> collecting dust, um, hanging up. I think I actually got rid of the wheels. So what I'm going to do with this is turn it into basically a human power hub. Uh, a universal hu pu human power hub where anybody pedaling on this can run all kinds of different appliances. The first one uh, that I'm going to make it run is the grinder. The plan is to mount it on something that will hold it at about this uh, orientation and then I'm going to get a hub for the back, a replacement axle. I'll put a new um, derailleur and chain on it so I can shift the gears and then that hub is going to come off on a belt pulley. And a belt pulley is just a round disc with a V in it. You have them in car engines. You've got a, well, I've got one right here, actually. Oh. I happen to. This is a, an old bench grinder, but it's got a pulley with a belt on it. And basically, I'm gonna replace this motor with this bike. And then I can run all kinds of tools that I'm gonna build. Um, like I said, the first one's gonna be that grinder. And so what I'm gonna do is make it so you can grind uh, corn, wheat, oats, whatever, uh, with pedal power instead of arm power. It took me about probably 15 minutes to grind a cup of corn three times. So with this, I'm hoping I can cut, not only cut down that time, but make it more pleasant time also, because this is not a natural motion, whereas bicycling is extremely natural. So. Now I just need to find the parts, take some measurements, uh, build the stand, and get that together. So I think I'm going to have to take a trip into the nearest town, uh, to the bike shop, and get some scrap parts. Some of my potatoes look really good, and they've been weeded consistently, and I can put down some uh, leaf mulch to keep this weeds down. But over here, I've had a little more trouble. As you can see, the grass has been growing up. And that's because there was a fence here and some infrastructure that's hard to weed around. And so today, I'm coming with my scythe, and I just kind of want to demonstrate how effective a scythe is in reducing uh, all of these weeds around plants that you don't want to cut down. So here we have potatoes, weeds, and more potatoes. And so what I can do is walk and simply just catch all the weeds on this side of the potatoes. And with the tip, I can kind of guide the scythe to push the potatoes out of the way, catch the weeds, and cut. And then I go back on the other side. Now this becomes mulch and will die and smother some of what's left. Now a friend of mine, Botan Anderson, who runs One Scythe Revolution, who taught me how to scythe and also I bought this scythe off of him, he had the really neat idea of spacing his potatoes out exactly the length of one large movement of a scythe, about six feet. And that way he could just walk and scythe a field between his potatoes and drop the hay on top of the potatoes um, as mulch with one motion. And it's really clever. Um, I'm not doing it here because I don't have the space, but uh, it's, a, it's not a bad idea. Well, there we are, 160. Well, it's been a busy couple of weeks um, and not just for food growing. Uh, sometimes I need to take on freelance work uh, in order to get done what I need to do and that's what happened this last week and that's why there wasn't an episode last week so what you're seeing 
in this episode was a lot of what happened last week and some of what happened this week and next week I'll catch up fully. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't get the episode out on time. That's uh, it's one of the things I really try and do, but work sometimes just gets in the way. So thanks for watching Food Foodmageddon. Uh, next week we'll be back with uh, a lot more plants, a lot more growing, and a lot more weeds uh, because it's that time of year. If I can't get on top of them now, I'm going to be sunk. Uh, but we're having a good time uh, with the with the warm weather and being home. But uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a change uh, coming in June as we won't be able to go to the grocery store as often and there's going to be a lot less available as fossil fuels become more scarce so do resources. So stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. Please share with your friends. Uh, check out our blog at lowtechinstitute.org and you can reach me at scott at lowtechinstitute.org. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.